Hello. Welcome to the BioSign Inc. Q4 and Fiscal Year 2020 Results Presentation. My name is Rene Gorham and I'm the President and CEO of the company. I'm going to start the presentation with a look at our sales, EBITDA and net income after tax for the quarter ended December 31st, 2020. So this quarter represented our 42nd consecutive profitable quarter. Our sales were up 3% in the quarter to uh, the year ago, reaching $5.72 million. And that, that was made up with uh, a few puts and takes. On the put side, the Canadian pharmaceutical business was up 7% in dollars versus the year ago, and the legacy business was up 180% versus the year ago. Uh, but remarkably as well, our international pharmaceutical business was down 87% in the quarter. The net-net of all those puts and takes was a growth of 3% corporately. On the income side, uh, we had impacts of uh, uh, significant investment in growth assets. So we've been launching three products, namely Tabella, Comagesic, and Fairmax PD. And uh, as, a, as a group, we've invested just under $700,000 in those three assets in the fourth quarter. So let's look now at uh, sales EBITDA and net income after tax for the full year. So our sales were up 4% to $22.3 million, and this was driven by the Canadian pharmaceutical business. Uh, our international business and our legacy business uh, were most impacted by COVID last year. International pharma down 84% and our legacy business down 16%. I've got uh, some comments on the international pharmaceutical business in a couple of slides, so I'll reserve comments for that. So I, I spoke on the last slide about uh, investments in our launch products. So those products are all in launch mode, will be for some period of time. And obviously they were before the fourth quarter as well. So in, in aggregate, we invested in development and uh, launch expenses, marketing and sales for those three assets of $1.7 million. So that would have obviously had quite a significant impact on our uh, EBITDA and net income after tax. But uh, we, as, as a continuing theme in this presentation is our commitment to, to revenue growth and, in, and making the, the investments that are required to, uh, to drive that growth. So let's drill down a little bit into the quarter and full year on a business unit and uh, brand basis for the Canadian pharmaceutical business. The Canadian pharma business in the quarter was just under $5.4 million, as I mentioned before, up 7%. For the year, it was 21.2, up a double digit at 12% growth. The thing to note here is Tabella was launched in late July of 2020, Comagesic in late December. And so Comagesic's contribution to revenue in the quarter was, was notional. It was some, some early wholesaler stocking orders, but modest. Uh, Tabella contributed more relative to a Comagesic, but, but nevertheless is still really in the early phase of, of introduction. So those two brands are, you know, how I would coin modestly revenue generating, significant investment consumers as we get them up and uh, on plane. Our Fairmax business was up double digit for the full year. Uh, Repagine business was up uh, for the full year, 6%, although flat in the quarter. The Cathagel business up double digit both in the quarter and for the full year. And the Agatone business was relatively flat in the quarter and uh, up significant double digits for the, for the full year 2020. The brand in Canada that uh, has, has been the most impacted by COVID-19 was Sisfew. It's a product uh, used in the uh, OR for management of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. We saw with the onset of wave one of COVID uh, that many of the o ORs uh, were shutting down. And certainly when they reopened, uh, the time allotted to uh, ORs for your oncology uh, seemed to be reduced. And so we saw a reduction in the CISVU business, both on the quarter and for the full year. And we don't imagine that's going to change much uh, until uh, operations in hospitals normalize and um, can't really make a call on to when we would expect that to happen. Uh, we're as hopeful as everyone else that, uh, that vaccinations move at pace and that those times come sooner than later. You can see here that our international pharma contributed uh, 57,000 for the quarter 
uh, reached 225,000 for the year, a market drop from the year prior. Thing to note here is that uh, we had a large order for Ferramax that went out in the first quarter. You'll see reflected in financial statements and some comments in our MDNA that uh, a large customer deposit. Uh, the shipment went out in January. Balance of uh, the shipment has been already been paid and uh, will be credited obviously to the first quarter. So uh, that business has a history uh, of being lumpy. This would be the ultimate definition of that where we have a year of such a low revenue and then starting the year with uh, with a very large order that will have a significant uh, impact for, for the first quarter. Our legacy business had a, had a large shipment go out to, towards the end of the year. It's at a, you know, on a comp basis up significantly. Uh, don't read anything into a trend there. Uh, I would say that we expect that business to bounce back to what it would more typically have contributed in, in the past. For the full year, it was down 16%. So you can't really talk about 2020 without uh, touching on COVID-19, as I've already done. We are, you know, through waves one and two, arguably in wave three. Uh, vaccinations have started in the Canadian market and many other markets internationally. And so, you know, it's, it's had an impact, a significant impact on our business, on our operations. We've been reporting on how we've been managing it and one impact it's had. Uh, I'd say kind of now looking back over the last 12 months, we, we've we managed to continue to grow the, the Canadian pharmaceutical business. In a COVID-19 environment, we launched three products. We made a, a strategic decision in early May last year that we weren't going to hold back, that we were going to push forward. We had to do some things differently in terms of uh, reaching out and communicating with customers. You see at the bottom of the slide that... Uh, that it continues to be an issue for, for us and for industry in Canada to have access to the healthcare professional and even a dialogue with the pharmacist. And so launching three key products that are going to be growth drivers for us for the next several years in this environment certainly isn't ideal, uh, but we've pushed forward and uh, believe it's the right thing to do to set the stage for, uh, uh, for the what I'll call post-COVID-19 period. We've managed our supply chain. We've had minimal inter, uh, supply interruptions. We've had some. Uh, we had some out of stocks in the first half of last year, but since then, um, things have been under control and, and managed and, and expect that to continue going forward. We did have some delays. It impacted the timing of our Tabella launch. That uh, came certainly months later than we expected to be able to launch that product, but uh, nevertheless, it's now in the market and we are able to uh, supply the demand that's being generated. Our experience was that uh, our export markets, particularly for Ferramax, uh, were clearly the most effective, affected and uh, that we've managed to uh, now secure that significant order that I spoke of. And, and you know, we expect this year to be significantly better than, than it was last year for our, our international sales of Ferramax. So on the Fairmax uh, brand, we announced in October last year a new uh, delivery system, Fairmax PD, as a platform for the brand and that it would uh, give us a platform for product innovation into the future. So PD is essentially a, a patented polydextrose iron complex and uh, we intend to drive innovation off of this platform going forward. So it, it will be the foundation for future product developments. Um, we've got a couple of things uh, in process now and expect uh, you should expect to be hearing news on, on Ferramax now uh, on an annual basis uh, going forward. Um, we expect there to be some, some technology news that's not necessarily related to uh, the PDIC that uh, that would be this year, and then you'll be hearing about products 22, 23, uh, likely 24 um, going forward. And these are product ideas essentially uh, internally generated as part of a life cycle strategy to address some market segments that are not being well served by existing uh, products and uh, that we can better access to drive uh, and address the needs of consumers and healthcare professionals, and thereby uh, gaining more market share uh, 
uh, for the Ferramax brand. So far, I can report that, uh, that what we've done on the Ferramax 150 uh, therapeutic product uh, has been successful. We essentially replaced the uh, existing product with the new Ferramax Therapeutic 150 starting in November. Uh, we're now uh, four and a half months into that process. And um, if you are wandering into a Canadian pharmacy and taking a look at what's on the, the, uh, the shelf behind the pharmacist counter, it's highly likely that in most pharmacies in Canada that stock that product that uh, they've switched over to the new the new Ferramax PD. So I've mentioned also driving our growth, uh, not just you know for last year modestly, but for this year and next year, uh, is Tabella, a hormone replacement therapy that we launched in July of 2020. And um, in December, we launched Combogesic, which is a new combination acetaminophen and ibuprofen product for pain relief, uh, mild to moderate pain relief. And that's really just early days for, for us for that product. If you're uh, listening to me from Canada, uh, you'll start seeing that product show up in your local pharmacy and you'll be seeing more promotional activity for that product as well. In October as well, we announced the in-licensing of a new women's health product and uh, we are preparing that product for launch. There are a number of steps that uh, we're following. We've got quite enough for our commercial folks to focus on Tabella, Ferramax, uh, and Comagesic at this point in terms of commercial activities, customer facing. So behind the scenes, we're doing some work on the new women's health product and uh, expect to have that in the market uh, at, very, at the very end of this year. It might spill over into uh, the beginning of next just based on some delays and things we've experienced related to COVID. So I've already talked about uh, our investment in these new products and essentially our commitment to investing in future growth. So these launch initiatives are underway. Uh, they are in the short-term capital consumers. The benefit for us obviously is growth of our Canadian pharmaceutical business and a diversification of the revenue streams um, uh, into new products. But, but this growth uh, requires investment. So you'll see it reflected in our financials for the quarter and for the year uh, that we're putting money into product development, marketing and selling and other promotional expenses. We've done that in uh, 2020. Uh, we'll continue to be doing that in 2021. And I expect uh, to a lesser degree, let's say it would be less conspicuous in 2022, but, but we expect that to be a period of time of, you know, I'll call it uh, 24 months uh, while those products gain traction in the market, we're building a brand awareness, uh, driving trial and adoption, uh, in some cases with the uh, healthcare professional, in some cases with the consumer. So these investments take time and we've got experience doing it and we're committed to uh, driving growth. But uh, if you're kind of looking at our P&L, uh, you would expect to see different ratios of what you normally would have seen in the past in terms of profitability in our business. But we are, as we have been all along, very committed to uh, operating a profitable business. So this is really just how it impacts ratios as opposed to uh, outright profitability. Speaking of our cash generation that we would derive from our business, uh, in 2020, we generated just under $7 million of cash from operations. Uh, that drove our cash and short-term investments balance to uh, $25.5 million. As we have been for a, for a long time, we, we do not have any long-term debt. We don't have any short-term debt. Our working capital position is strong. If you're looking at the balance sheet, you'll see that our equity was reduced last year by uh, just over $2.5 million um, when we repurchased uh, 594,000 shares under our NCIB, so that was during fiscal 2020. <clears throat> Since we com commenced operations under NCIB in December of 18, we've uh, deployed over $10 million of capital in uh, buying back our shares. So the, the one message I'd like to leave you with uh, on this is that we are investing in growth and our top priority is to grow the business and uh, we're in the process of doing that. And we're committed to that we're deploying capital against growth, and we'll continue to do that. But uh, if the market wants to uh, make uh, shares available at prices that we deem attractive, um, 
we uh, we're still participants uh, in our NCIB. So a, a quick update, a snapshot on the NCIB itself. Uh, we've coined the, the three approvals that we've received uh, from the TSX Venture as NCIB 1, 2, and 3. And you can see on this chart a recap of the number of shares that we've repurchased under, the, under these programs. Take note, NCIB 3 was approved uh, in December and subsequent to period end, we've purchased 65,000 shares uh, under that program as of March the 15th. So I'm recording this uh, presentation on March the 15th. Overall, that represents an 11% reduction in fully diluted shares since we started our first NCIB in December of 2018. So I want to take a quick look at our fully diluted earnings per share. And um, other than noting our five cents per share performance in the fourth quarter, I wanted to point out a couple of things here. We've already spoken of our commitment to in investing in growth and uh, told you about uh, the absolute dollars that we've invested in in that growth. I thought it would be useful uh, for you if we expressed that to you uh, in fully diluted earnings per share. So the investments that we made in the fourth quarter represented four cents per share in uh, fully diluted EPS for the quarter and for the full year represented uh, 10, 10 cents per share. I'll leave it to you to, to do the math there. It's a snapshot uh, kind of keeping score of our shares outstanding. You can see there a little over 13 million shares now with the most recent uh, purchase uh, in March uh, under our NCIB. And, um, and we are holding some shares in trust uh, for RSUs that we have outstanding. So I wanted to uh, thank you again for your interest and the continued support of the company. It's been an interesting a year since kind of COVID arrived in Canada and wasn't just a story from kind of somewhere away. And it's been an interesting time to operate a business, but I'm really excited about what we've got in front of us, uh, growth assets, um, the response that we're getting to those growth assets and the durability of our business and, and our people to, to operate in a difficult environment and uh, continue to, to grow our business. So I look forward to uh, sharing with you how we're progressing on that the next time I'll have a chance to do so is uh, towards the end of May when we report our first quarter to you. Thank you.